And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 1.29 Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. On today's program, we are going to be making some things that normally you go to a restaurant to get, a Chinese restaurant. And, you know, making your own Chinese food at home is not difficult, but I bet you thought you couldn't do it. With some ingredients that you get in any grocery store out there, you can do it yourself at home. Today, we're going to be making Kung Pao Chicken with white rice. We're going to be making two different kinds of egg rolls. We're going to do a shrimp egg roll and a pork egg roll. They are so easy and so much better at home because you can control the quality of the ingredients and what you put in it. So we're going to get started first on our egg rolls. I've got two skillets here that I am preheating because I'm gonna be making two different kinds. We're gonna make a pork egg roll and a shrimp egg roll because not everybody likes shrimp and not everybody likes pork. So we're gonna do two different kinds today. In this back skillet, I have a half of a pound of ground pork that you can get in any grocery store out there where they sell the pork chops and the sirloin pork roasts and those kinds of things. They sell, they usually come prepackaged up in a box but they sell just ground pork. And so you can get that. Now in this skillet, we're going to be making these shrimp egg rolls. And while this is starting to brown up, let's talk a little bit about our other ingredients. Let me turn the heat up just a little bit. We have got, for the egg rolls, I promise you, they're very easy. We have three scallions that we're gonna chop up and we're just gonna divide this between the two pans. And I'm gonna use most of the, um, greens, but we'll throw away a little bit of it, and just chop them kind of fine. You could use, if you didn't have any scallions, you could use a small white onion or yellow onion that you just mince very, very fine. You could use a shallot, although I think the shallot probably would be a little bit mild in flavor for this. You know, Chinese food has got some strong flavors in it, lots of garlic, lots of onion, and lots of ginger root. And I've got a piece here. So let's divide, let's stir our pork here. It's starting to cook up here. Let's push that over to the side. Then we are going to add some ginger root. Now I bet you have seen this in your grocery store and you have thought, what in the world is that and what do I do with it? This is a ginger root and it's just a knobby, ugly looking thing but it tastes so very, very good. And what you wanna do is you want to peel away, and if you see inside the ginger root, it's just a little bit white on the inside, but you wanna peel away the brown outer coating and just peel what you think you're gonna need. Now for this recipe, I'm gonna need about two tablespoons, so I'm gonna peel quite a bit of it. What you don't use Take this and place it in your freezer and it will keep for months and months and you just pull it out, grate what you need and put it back in there. This is a microplane. You can get this in any, any of the you know, cooking stores out there, any of your mass marketing, you know, like the Walmarts and Targets and just run your ginger over the microplane. It's kind of a stringy, uh, it's, it's actually a rhizome, it's a root. It's, it's a little bit on the stringy side, but what the microplane will do is just kind of grate it up. And you see how it just, it just the back of it, you always tap your microplane anytime you use that, because typically no matter what you're doing, it will stick to the back of your microplane. I love ginger, it's spicy, it's a little tiny bit hot. This is not one of those times that you can substitute the ground, the pre-ground powdered ginger. There is a world of difference in the flavor. Now the powdered ginger that you can buy in your spice section is great for baked goods, cookies and that kind of thing. But for something like this, you really, really need, 
your fresh ground. And it's just, you know, that little knob probably costs 25 cents. It's not expensive at all, and it is so good. And it adds such a punch of flavor to your food. Now, our ground pork is browning up. I love egg rolls, but at home, when you make them at home, they're not greasy. They are just, they're yummy, and they're not difficult to make at all. You just use ingredients that you get in any grocery store out there. So we've got our ginger. We'll pile that over here. Next, of course, is a clove of garlic. I mean, you know, Chinese food is loaded with garlic. So just take one clove for the egg rolls. Smash it and then peel it. If you just place the garlic underneath the, the heel of your knife and hit it, it will just, just take those skins right off. Mince it kind of fine. It's just fresh garlic. I use fresh garlic in a lot of things that I cook. I love the flavor. I love the smell. And garlic just adds that little touch of heat and spice to anything that you cook. And I, I just love it. I, I do. I use a lot of garlic. You can use the, in the, sometimes in the produce department of your grocery store, you can buy those jars of the pre-diced up garlic. You can use that if you want to. That would be fine. Now we've got our garlic. So our pork is, is pretty much browned. So at this point, this is extremely lean. This particular batch of the pork that I bought is very lean. You can see in the skillet there's absolutely no fat whatsoever. So that's good. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of oil. I'm going to add a little bit, probably a tablespoon or so, between my pans of olive oil. You could use canola oil or whatever you want. And we're going to use today, in the, in the produce department of your grocery store, you can buy these bags of pre-shredded up coleslaw mix and just add about half the bag to that one and about half the bag to this one because we're making two different kinds today. You know, at home, you can just make one or the other if you want to, but we wanted to sample two different kinds and stir that around. And you're just trying to saute and soften up the cabbage just a little bit. To that, we're going to take what we've chopped. We're going to take half of it. Let me use my little chopper. We're going to take half of the onions and put in each skillet. We're going to take half the ginger and put in each skillet. That's probably a little more than half. Let's put a little more in that one. And then half the garlic in each skillet. Stir it around. And I am making a mess here. Let's turn the heat down just a little bit. And to that, we are going to do, now over the break, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I've got one can of sliced water chestnuts that I'm just going to chop up, and I'm going to put half in the pork and half in the shrimp, and I'll be right back with you in just a minute. And welcome back. Now, over the break, all I did was chop the water chestnuts and divided it and put it in there in the two pans. We In this container, I have a can of the tiny shrimp that you can get. And you can see they are so little. They're just little tiny, tiny shrimp. You don't really need to do anything further except drain them. And we're going to add that to our shrimp mixture. And we're going to stir that in. See how easy this is? 
This is the filling. What we're making here is the filling. And you can customize this. You could use ground chicken instead of the pork if you wanted to. You could use chopped up beef. You could, I've never had a beef egg roll, but I guess you could use ground beef if you wanted to. Ground pork is kind of traditional, or shrimp. To our skillets, we are going to add about two tablespoons each, in each pan, two tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm using low sodium soy sauce because I just, you know, I, don't, I just don't want all that sodium, but you can use whatever kind of soy sauce that you like. You don't want your filling really moist. You don't want it dripping with liquid because remember, we are gonna be adding this to an egg roll wrapper and some fresh ground pepper for a little bit of heat here. Get my pepper meal going. Well, it's not wanting to work. There we go, I didn't have it on there tight enough. I like things spicy and hot, so I add quite a bit of pepper to mine. You can add however much that you like. You do not need to add any salt whatsoever because your soy sauce is loaded with sodium, so you don't need to. And that's it for your fillings. Turn your skillets off. Stir that in. And I'm telling you, that right there alone over some rice is absolutely yummy. So they're ready, they're good to go. Now, to roll the egg rolls, in the produce department, I never have any problems, let me wipe off my cutting board, never have any problems finding egg roll wrappers. They come in a package just like this. They're big squares, usually there's 15, sometimes 16 in each package. So we're going to make them all today. We're just gonna take them out. And they're little thin, as you can see, they're little thin. Um, they're made of, of, I guess, of rice flour and water. Place one on your cutting board, on the diagonal. Now, it's really important that you see this technique. On the diagonal, just like that. Then take a spoonful, let me grab a spoon, of your filling, whichever one, we'll start with the pork, doesn't matter, whichever one you want, about a third of the way up, you want to place, oh, probably two to three tablespoons per egg roll. Start at the back, take your back corner, turn it in, kind of tuck it in there, then take your corners. You see your corner here? You're going to turn that corner in. You're going to turn the other corner in. That seals in the filling. Roll it up till you get to that point. Take just plain water. Dip your finger in water and go along the edge of the egg roll wrapper and keep wrapping. And there you go is an egg roll. Let me show you one more real quick. Take it and put about two tablespoons or so. You don't want to overfill them or they will burst in your cooking. Promise. Done it. Been there. <laughs> Take it, fold it in there. Take your edges and wrap, roll them to the middle. Tuck them down in there and then just keep wrapping. When you get to the end, moisten the very end and keep wrapping and there's you a perfect egg roll. Okay, we've got our egg rolls all wrapped up. They just look right here, they're so pretty. We, we got a baking sheet with a cooling rack on it and I just lined it with paper towel that's to drain our egg rolls on. You want to get a pan of oil, I'm just using canola oil. You want it to be hot. You want to place your egg rolls seam side down. Where you finished wrapping your seam, you want that to go down in the oil. These do not take long to cook. Remember, your filling is already done. Be careful when you're adding this. Remember, these are hot. It's hot oil. You can probably fry about, I don't know, seven or eight of them at a time. 
I just shallow pan fry. You by all means could, you know, you, you could use a deep fryer, but it's not necessary. You can just do shallow frying because they really only take a minute or so. This is one of those recipes that you could, you know, you could customize this any way you wanted. Let's say you'd, maybe you don't like cabbage. You could get bok choy in the grocery store and you could chop, it's a, it's a long, lean, um, looks kind of like cabbage, but it really doesn't taste like cabbage. You could chop that up and substitute for the cabbage. You could add some carrots to it if you wanted to. You could add um, more onion, less onion. You could just do it in so many different ways. You could add some Chinese five spice powder if you wanted to. You could add that to the egg roll it, when you're making your filling. You could add the five spice powder, which is really good, and, and I just love it. Now, of course, you want to serve these hot. You want to, um, most people like either the sweet hot mustard or duck sauce or something like that to serve with them. I like them plain, but, you know, some people do like the other with it. Now see that goldeny brown? That's what you want. So just turn them over and they fry very quickly. If your oil is hot, you want to make sure that your oil is hot before you put your egg rolls in there. If you don't, what's going to happen is that the, the, the little wrapper is very thin and it will absorb all of the oil and it'll get inside the filling and it just would not taste very good. It'd be very greasy. So this way, your, the, the oil sears the outside and it doesn't let it penetrate into the inside. And they're, they, they go very, very, very quickly. And we're just going to keep sauteing these up, letting them fry. And when we come back, we are going to make one of my favorites. It's called Kung Pao Chicken. And I promise you, you can do it at home with things that you find in your regular grocery store. You will not need to make a special trip to a Chinese market. Kung Pao Chicken is coming up. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Now we've got our egg rolls done and they just look so good. But we are going to make our Kung Pao Chicken. I've got a large skillet that's preheating over medium high heat. You could use a wok, I don't have a wok, so I'm just using a skillet. We're gonna add about two teaspoons or so and my skillet is hot. Be very careful when you add any kind of food to a hot skillet. I've got a package of boneless, skinless chicken breasts that I've just cut up into bite-sized pieces and we're gonna add that. And you hear that sizzle? That's what you want. And when you add your meat to your skillet, don't move it around for the first couple of minutes. Place it kind of where you want it. And I'm going to stand back a little bit because this is spattering everywhere. Place it where you want it and let it go. If you mess with it, you mess up that caramelization that you want to get on your meat. So place it. Let my oil go over there. I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. We're going to get our raw things. While that's cooking, I'm going to turn it down. Ooh, that's hot. If you need to cool your pan off real quick, just take it off the heat for just a minute. Let it cool down, and then we'll put it back on there because that's really hot. While that's going, we're going to chop one yellow pepper. Traditionally, this recipe uses broccoli. I'm not a real big fan of fresh broccoli, so I just substitute the things that I like. If you like broccoli, by all means, you can put, you know, just, just broccoli in with your, leave out the, the vegetables that I'm using and use broccoli, but I'm going to use the things that I like. That's the wonderful thing about cooking. You use whatever you like. And we're going to cut these up into like bite-sized pieces. The yellow pepper, you could use a red pepper, you could use an orange pepper, you could use a green pepper. I just, I like the color of the yellow and the sweetness that it adds. This is a very spicy dish, very spicy. If you don't like hot, you might, you know, want to tone down a little bit on the red pepper flakes. We're going to stir our chicken. Let me get a wooden, I love wooden utensils. I use them all the time. You see that golden color that you're getting on your chicken? That's what you want. That's what happens when you don't mess with your chicken. When you put it in the pan, leave it alone, and it will 
it'll do that on its own. That's the caramelization that you want. Remember, any time you work with any utensil that you have raw chicken on, you want to make sure that you don't cross-contaminate, so get another utensil there. Just kind of turning these over, letting that other side get browned up. Because I cut them in such small pieces, they will cook very quickly. That's one thing about Chinese cooking that I like is that it is very quick cooking. This is a, uh, one of those dishes that you could make when you come home from a tired, long, hard day. And you can have a good supper on your table quicker than you could go to a Chinese restaurant and eat. And, it, and you, this way you control what goes in it. So we want to let that, let that go. We've got our pepper chopped. We're going to use some scallions, or you could use an onion if you wanted it. You want to add some of the green. So trim it up and just chop it in, oh, say, you know, about half inch pieces. Just to add some flavor. I've got the pre-shredded up carrots that you can buy in your produce department. I've got about a cup of those. We're going to add those. You could shred your own carrots if you wanted to. We're going to chop some garlic. Most of the work with Chinese cooking, truthfully, is in the prep because the cooking part goes very quickly. Because the beautiful thing about Chinese food is that you don't want your vegetables, you know, you still want them to be crisp. You still want them to have some of their texture. You just, you know, that's the wonderful thing about Chinese cooking is why it is so quick is you don't cook it to where it's, you know, mushy and, and soft. You still want your vegetables to have some crispness to it. We're going to mince three cloves of garlic. Slice it first. Oops, my onions are joining the party here. Slice it first and then take your knife and just mince it up. Once you get all your prep work done, the rest of it's just very, very simple. I don't own a wok. Now, if, if you do, by all means, use your wok. I just don't, I don't have one. So I'm just using, I always just use a big skillet so that I can kind of move things around once I get going with my vegetables. And it works just as good. We're going to use some more of our ginger. Remember what, what we talked about with the ginger. We want about another tablespoon or so smells so good. It's got a little bit of a pungent flavor, a little bit of spice, a little bit of heat. Again, this is not a recipe that you can substitute the powdered ground ginger that you can get in your spice section. There is no comparison in the flavor. Some things you can get away with using a dried ingredient, but this is not one of them. And this fresh ginger is so inexpensive. You know, it sells for like $2.99 a pound, but you're not getting a whole pound. This little rhizome that I bought was probably 25 or 30 cents. And then just remember to beat your microplane to get it off the back, because that's typically where it sticks. And our chopping is done. Now, let's check our chicken. And it just looks so good. What I like to do is take one of my bigger pieces, kind of cut it in half with my um, spatula and make sure it's done in the middle because you're going to be taking this out of the pan. Now, our chicken is done. So let's take the chicken out of the pan and put it in a separate bowl for the moment. Just put your chicken aside. Put your pan back on the skillet. Add another tablespoon or so of oil and add your vegetables. Add your peppers and your onions. I don't add my garlic and my ginger yet. I wait until a little bit closer to the end. Add your carrots. You could substitute other vegetables that you like. And you're just gonna stir fry these Whoop. for just a minute. Let's add those back in. They escaped. See how pretty it is and how colorful? Like I said, traditional Kung Pao chicken just uses broccoli. But I'm not a, a fan of, of fresh broccoli. I love frozen broccoli. Is that not strange? But I'm not a real big fan of fresh broccoli. I will eat it, but I prefer other things. So you could substitute whatever your favorite vegetables are. We have just some white rice that we have cooked. And you want to just serve this with plain white rice. 
You still want them to have a little bit of their crisp to them. We'll give them just a second more. We're gonna add in our garlic and we're gonna add in our ginger. I do wanna encourage you to try new things. You know, it, a lot of people think that cooking is just so intimidating and it really is not. When you just get the basic technique down and, and you just try new things, it's just food, you know, and, and it's something we need every day and you're never going to know unless you try. And so I do want to encourage you to get in the kitchen and cook. Now we're going to add our chicken back in our skillet. Mix that all together. Mmm, smells so good. Look at that, how pretty that looks. Then we're going to add our spices our soy sauce and our red pepper flakes and our rice vinegar. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, I wish you had smell-o-vision to where you could smell how good this is. It just smells absolutely divine to me. Then you wanna add your, this is called a slurry. Remember, your cornstarch and your chicken, it's just going to thicken up and make a sauce. Kind of pour that over. And I don't know that we're going to need all that. That needs about a minute or so to thicken up. The, the, um, the cornstarch just adds a glossiness to your final dish. And that, my friends, is Kung Pao chicken. It's done. It's so good. We're just going to serve that over some white rice that we've already cooked. If I can get the pan here. We're just going to put a little serving of that over our rice. And it just looks so good. That is done. We've got our beautiful egg rolls here that we made earlier. We've got shrimp egg rolls and pork egg rolls. The final touch to your Kung Pao chicken is peanuts. All Kung Pao chicken is topped with just plain salted peanuts. We bought some Just Fortune cookies that you can buy in any grocery store out there, our beautiful fortune cookies, because what's a Chinese meal without your fortune cookies? We've got our egg rolls, our Kung Pao chicken, our sweet and sour sauce, and our fortune cookies, one of my favorite Chinese dishes. I hope that you'll try it and enjoy. Thank you for joining me. If you've enjoyed this episode of Everyday Manna and would like a copy of today's recipes, please send a self-addressed stamp envelope to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, Post Office Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212. Or visit our website at www.livingfaithtv.com. Please be sure to include the program number found at the bottom of the screen in your letter. Thanks for watching and join us again for the next episode of Everyday Manna.